let's look at how we can graph quadratic functions or para parabolas. Okay, so four key things you need to, in order to graph or make a good sketch of a quadratic function. That is, we've got our y-intercept. Now, to find our y-intercept, we know that we have to make x equal to 0. To find your x-intercept, we know we have to make y equal uh, to 0. And when we do that, when we try and solve this situation, this is when we are solving a quadratic function. So that's all of the skills that you have come up with and practiced earlier. So they include, you're going to have to factorize. Okay, you might be asked to complete the square. You might even be asked to use the quad formula. Okay, uh, and you've also got your graphic calculator as an option to find these things. So we'll go through all of these. Um, we're also going to be able to find the axis of symmetry. You can see on the graph because the axis of symmetry here is right smack bang in the middle of your x-intercepts. Well, one way is just to find the average of your x-intercepts. So you add them together, divide by two. And the other way is obviously using the formula that we have come to love, minus b on 2a. And then, of course, we've got our vertex. Now, our vertex passes through our axis of symmetry. So what we're going to do is we will use this value from up here. That will be my x value. Okay. And to find my y value, I'm just going to pop that back into the equation. Right. Wherever x is, I will find, oops, I will find, sub it back in to find my y value. Um, fancy terms. What we're saying, what that is saying, f of minus b on 2a, that says just put that x value back into the original function. So don't worry too much about that. I'll just put that there because it, you know, looks impressive. All right. So we will be looking at these two examples and that will show you how we can go through um, and work out these four situations. And you'll see that some of them are quite nice uh, well, I think all of them is quite nice. Some methods are going to be better than others. So let's do this quite quickly. So with the first one, to find my y-intercept, to make x equal 0, okay, we then go, not a problem, that means everything here, oh, good on your pen, that means everything here, wherever x is, we become 0, so 0 squared is 0, minus 6 times 0 is 0. So we end up with y equals 40, and you will be lovely to me, and you will write that as a coordinate, please. So that's going to be 0, 40. Okay. Um, and then we want to find our x-intercept. So we'll just pop this equation to the side here. We're not going to look at that yet. We're focusing on this one. So what we're solving, so we're solving our quadratic. We're making the y equal 0. Away we go. And my first option is to try and factorize, because that's always going to be the quickest. Unfortunately, I've got a minus in front of the x squared, but that's okay. I'm just going to pop, pull that out as a common factor. So I get x squared plus 6x, take 40. And we're going to be going in our heads or on paper, we're saying what two numbers times together gives me minus 40, but adds up to be positive 6. So you might already know that. I'm just popping the factors here. So 1 and 40. 2 and 20, does 3 go in? No. Does 4 go in? 10 times. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, just finish off. Does 5 go in? 8 times. 6, no. 7, no. 8. So bang, we've got all the factors. And clearly, we can see that it's got to be 4 and 8. So we carry on. And we say, right. What did I say? Just 4 and 8. 4 and 10, sorry. Okay. Now, which one's positive and which one's negative? Because I want the plus... 6 there, that means it has to be plus 10 and then take 4. You can double check that by expanding and seeing if it works. And so therefore, my x-intercept, right, is minus 10 and my other one is minus, is positive because 4 take 4 is 0. So, and again, we will write these as coordinates. So minus 10, 0 and 4, 0. Okay, so that's my go-to option, but annoyingly, some questions might ask you to do it via completing the square 
or quad formula okay so quad formula you can go and do that in your own time one day or today because we know minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac you can sub that in and hopefully you realize that a is your minus 1 b is minus 6 and c is the 40. you will know that you've got it right by checking you've already factorized it so that's groovy remember you've also got your calculator okay so remember you can go in here go into equation okay polynomial we're going to go degree two and we pop our coefficients in so we just said it's minus one it's minus six and we had positive 40. so we can check if our answers were right for our factorizing so did we get 4 and minus 10, we certainly did. We know we're right. Okay. The other option is we can go into the graphing mode. We'll just get the other bits and pieces and then I'll show you how we can do it on the graph as well. Okay. So getting back to this, remember the other way that they could ask you to do it is by completing the square. Okay. A question might ask you to find the x-intercepts by completing the square. If it doesn't ask you to do it by that, don't do it. So we're solving minus x squared takes 6x plus 40 okay remember this is the bit that we focus on and we've still got our minus to contend with so i'm going to say minus x squared plus 6x okay now i know that when i want to um, pop this into my perfect square when i see the 6 i divide it by 2 so I know I'm going to want to have x plus 3 squared. And to get that, I need an x squared, a 6x, and a plus 9. Okay? Now, um, we've got, we've got the plus 9, so I'm going to just pop that in there. So I'm going to add 9 in there. Okay? The 40 can go on the other side. It becomes minus 40. And you might think, ooh, um, I have added 9 here, but remember you've got the minus, okay? So because I have technically, I've actually subtracted 9 from this side, I have to also subtract 9 from that side. So I end up with minus 49 equals minus x plus 3 squared. What will happen is the minus was, minuses will now cancel. Two negatives make a positive. How do I get rid of the squared? We're going to square root. The square root of 49 is 7, but we can have plus or minus. And that leaves us with x plus 3. Okay. How do I get rid of the plus 3? We're going to take 3. So we end up with minus 3 plus or minus 7 equals x. And now we can just work x out because this is the shortcut version of saying we could have minus 3 take 7, which is minus 10. And it could also be minus 3 plus 7, which gives me the 4. Sorry about my pen. Um, and that is what we had before. So again, I'm just showing you because a question could ask you to do it completing the square. If it doesn't, then please factorize or use your quad formula. And that's that's the end of it. Okay, We're, let's wrap this up now to get our um, axis of symmetry. Okay, so axis of symmetry, we can use our formula here for minus b over 2a. Okay, so we get x equals now your minus b our b is minus 6 so it's minus minus 6 which is positive 6 over 2a which is 2 times minus 1 so it's minus 2 therefore my axis of symmetry is minus 3 and you could have got that by just working out the averages of 10 and 4 right so minus 10 plus 4 okay oh, sorry that gives you minus that's a 2 that gives you minus 6 and minus 6 divided by 2 is 
3 minus thereof. So you get the same answer if we average our zeros out. Okay, so if we averaged our x-intercepts, we get the same answer. So again, which method is the one that you use? The one that you prefer, okay? Whatever works for you. Now our vertex, what we know is it has to be an x value. It has to have the x value that goes through the axis symmetry. So it's minus 3, and that's asking you, well, what's y going to be when x is minus 3? So we're going to replace that in here. So we end up with y equals minus, and we want to go x squared. Now we're saying our x value is minus 3. So that will be, we're just going to sub it straight in. Okay, so pop that. So minus 3 squared minus 6 times minus 3 is minus 3 plus 40. I'm just following right, the rule that tells me what y is. Pop that into your calculator, or you don't even need to. Minus 9 plus 18 plus 40, so that gives you 49. So now we know my vertex. We also know right from the beginning from looking at it that this graph right, was going to be concave because of this negative value here. So now we get to graph. So rather than just going willy-nilly into drawing your axes, have a look at your x-intercept. So we know it's going to be more to the left because it's minus 10. Okay. We know also that our y-intercept has to go as high um, our y value has to go as high as 49 here. Okay, so when we draw our axes, right, I make sure that right, it's got the room up the top and room to the left. Okay, it's pointless having a graph like this, or let's exaggerate even more, right? A graph that looks like this, and it's all going to be happening up here, and so you've got all this wasted space. So you know. All right, we've got an x-intercept of minus 10 and 4. Sometimes it's easier just to draw, oops, because you want to try and keep it symmetric. It's not overly great, but it's going to do for now. Okay, and then you can say what points they pass through. Okay, um, we've got here our y-intercept is 40. We get a ruler so you should draw all of this, your axes and everything has to be with a ruler. I have not done that. And you can see that it looks just like I haven't, so quite sloppy. Freehand for your other. Make sure you label your axis. So that's going to be x equals minus 3. Okay, we can even put the little minus 3 over there. And we will also finish off by labeling our vertex. So that is minus 3, 49. Okay, got x on our axis, we've got the y axis labelled, that's pretty good. My pen holds out, I would also label my graph. And that's how we draw a pretty good sketch. Um, when it comes to a function like this, we do the same thing, but because it's in a different form, um, some of the things we do will be a little bit different. So when we did the y-intercept, we still make our x equal to 0. So this time when we make x0, it's not just going to be this number at the end because 0 take 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 squared is 4. 4 take 3, we get, oopsies, sorry about that, we get 1. All right, so again, write it as a coordinate. So that's going to be um, x-intercept, sorry, y-intercept will be 0, 1. Now, your y in your x intercept, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're making y equal zero. Now you could expand, but because it's already in acute form for us, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I can get x by itself here because I can get rid of this minus three by putting positive three on the other side. Okay, and now I can get rid of the squared by square rooting, so we end up with plus or minus root three. All right, equals x take 2. And now we can say to get rid of our minus 2, we're going to add 2. So it's going to be 2 plus or minus root 3 equals x. And that tells me that, you know, this is one that was no way ever going to be able to be factorized. Okay, if I had expanded, I would have had to have used my quad formula. But anyway, we've got this. Okay, now to get my axis of symmetry, 
Um, I'm actually going to do my vertex first because it's in the vertex form. So my vertex will be 2, right? So we reverse the sign and then we keep the sign for that minus 3. So my vertex is 2 minus 3. This, right, my x value, that's my axis of symmetry. So x equals 2 is my axis of symmetry. Is it going to be concave or convex? Well, because there's a positive here, that means it's convex. Okay, from some of the work that we did before, we already know that this minus 2 made the graph go left and this minus 3 made the graph go down by minus 3. So we have a look. Um, did I say to the left or to the right? So let's have a look. We're going to be going to the right um, and down minus 3. Um, we might need to do a quick little score check with our 2 plus or minus root 3 to see is it positive, is it negative. So 2 plus root 3. Okay. And then 2 take root 3. So they're both positive. It's going to be convex. So we'll go like so. Okay. My y-intercept is 1. My vertex is 2 minus 3. Okay. This x-intercept is going to be the 2 plus root 3. Okay, it's the 2 take root 3. I've popped in my axis of symmetry, made sure I've labelled my axes, and there we go. The only thing to just do now is to check with our graphics calculator. So we can go into menu. This time we're going to go into the graphing mode, so we can press 5. Okay, just I've got some there, so we'll just delete them. All right, let's go in and we've got x, take 2 squared, take 3. Before we graph, let's just check that we're on uh, standard, so we press standard there. Press enter, we graph, that looks pretty good. Okay, I can G solve minimum. 2 minus 3, we've got that correct. Okay, let's try the one that we did earlier. So up here, we can go back up, and that was now minus x squared, take 6x plus 40. Let's have a look at that. Now you can see my scale's not that great. I could increase manually, so go shift view window, and I can scroll down. And we knew that the y value went up to 49, so I might just make it 55. And there we go. Okay, shift maximum, right, x equals minus 3. That's what we got there, 49. If I wanted to check my x-intercepts, we press root minus 10, press your arrow over, and we got 4. Okay, and that's how we sketch our graphs. The four bits of information, you can find them, either the x-intercepts by using factorization, completing the square quad formula. Good job.